Well, as racing week in America continues on NBC Sports, it's been so much fun. We're going to continue the action now with a little bit of IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship flavour with the Taylor brothers, the Taylor boys, Ricky and Jordan. Welcome. And uh, first and foremost, how are you? You both well and healthy? And is mum and, mum and dad well too? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely an odd time. Mum and dad are kind of quarantined in their bunker at home and Jordan and I uh, are in our respective houses and uh, luckily we're in a sport where we can kind of keep busy with whether it's sim simulator racing or uh, still communicating with the engineers and team and trying to trying to make sure we're as ready as possible when we get to go back racing. Do you see what he just did then Jordan? He pushed in front of you. He, yeah. He, he, he outbraked you. Normal prototype <laughs> driver move right there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, we're going to have some fun, not necessarily talk about racing the whole time, but what I do want to address is the success of your dad's team, of course, Wayne Taylor Racing, the number 10, the Konica Minolta DPI. Um, your dad's team won the Rolex 24 at Daytona this year overall, or was it for like the third time in four years? Unbelievable successful run continues, but weirdly so, oddly so, was the first time in a long time that neither of you or both of you were in that car. Jordan, I'll start with you first. Was that somewhat of a, a surreal feeling for you? Yeah, it was weird. I mean, you know, I was, I was with the team for seven years from 2013 to 2019. So, you know, most of my professional career was with them. So they're like family. Even when I walked to the, into the paddock, you know, this year is the first time in eight years that I've walked to a different trailer. So I saw, they were still the first ones I saw. They were rolling into the tech line at Daytona when I walked in the track. So they were still the first faces I saw. And then I kind of had to remind myself, up, oh, I'm going to a different truck now. But even when the race was rolling, uh, you know, all through the night, you know, I, I found myself often checking the timing and scoring for the prototype class. That's just what I'm so used to doing and looking for the 10 car, where's the 10 car? Even on the timing pylon, like when you drive around the, the oval, you can look at it and see where they are. So I found myself looking at it all the time and, you know, sometimes looking at my own class second, which was odd, but I think it's just going to keep evolving over the year. But They've done such an amazing job. You know, their, their history and 24-hour events has just been unbelievable. From 2013 now until 2020, you know, they finished pretty much every single lap except for one year uh, when we had a tire issue. So uh, they got amazing history that 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 event in particular. And I think, uh, you know, it's something my dad can be very proud of. Ricky, how did you feel? Yeah, uh, I mean, similar to Jordan. It didn't sound like Jordan was checking on the seven car at all. <laughs> um, to for hour. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Jordan and I both know what a great job the, the whole Wayne Taylor racing team does. And um, they've proven themselves at the 24 hour that they're always going to be the car to beat. And they always, they always bring a great driver lineup. Um, I mean, it, it was a bit odd for us not to be there and to be in it. And for us, kind of thinking about our dad, um, his main motivation was always kind of being a family and going to the racetrack together and trying to win the race as a, as a family. And, and the whole race team is kind of a close knit family, but he replaced us with some pretty unbelievable talent. And uh, I think that always keeps him very motivated. And aside from all the guys on the team that do such a great job that keep him motivated to, uh, you know, to push hard and keep going, um, having Dixon and Kobayashi, Ranger and Ryan um, definitely had him pretty excited. I want to go back, Jordan, uh, just over a year ago when you got to win the Rolex 24 at Daytona with Fernando Alonso. And you didn't only get to win, you know, the biggest sports car race here in the United States with a two-time Formula One world champion, but you befriended him. He became part of your dad's team and he really enjoyed your sense of humor. Tell us all what that was, what that was like. Yeah, I wasn't sure how he would, uh, how he would take it. I think the first time I ever, ever like, even spoke to him was via social media and I made some weird interview video where like I made it seem like I was sitting across the table from inter interviewing from for the job and I made it and uh, I thought it was quite funny but I didn't know how he would take it so I sent it to Ricky say like what do you think about this do you think he'd be offended or do you enjoy it and then when I posted it like that's the first time he ever said a word to me so uh, I'm glad he took it well he does have a good sense of humor he comes across obviously very hard-headed you know, very competitive, which he is, uh, but he has a very light side, very funny side, and it was nice to get to know that side of him after, you know, it even took, even when I met him in person, it took a couple of days to kind of get that out of him and, you know, form a bond, you know, outside the car, uh, but once you get to know him, he was, uh, he was a really fun guy to hang out with. 
Ricky, for you, um, I think it's probably been a, a while since I've asked you this, but it, it will be a good reminder and you can pinch yourself that it's still true. What's it like to be a Penske driver? <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, I think every driver dreams of driving for the captain and, and uh, I, I'll never forget the, when I first tested for Penske, it was in the IndyCar, driving Simon's IndyCar, and I, I ended the day not knowing uh, where it would go or what would happen. And I just remember that cool down lap and I was thinking, man, if I don't ever you know, do anything else again in my racing career, I got to drive a Penske car and uh, to now be racing full time with, um, with Team Penske and Acura, uh, it really is a dream come true. And then getting to share the car and with, with Elio Castroneves and, and Juan and Dane in the other car and, and get to really learn a lot from, from all their experience has been um, an amazing experience. And just to see how um, kind of the, the secret sauce of what makes Penske so great. And um, it's, been, it's been really a great experience. Keep the ball, Ricky, because uh, I want to ask you something about your little brother. He's got quite the social media following now because of his sense of humor. Now, in straightforward interviews, kind of like this one, I guess, uh, he, he plays a, with a pretty straight bat. But once he's on his own or with his buddies at his house and, and with his GoPros and with his iPhone and whatever, he, he has quite the sense of humor that's, that's garnered quite the following. Was he like this as a kid? He wasn't. Um, <laughs> he's kind of gotten this personality in the last... Um, I mean, he's always had the personality. That's who he is. It's just he's only started to show it recent, more recently on social media. And um, I think, you know, having a racing career alongside sort of, I call it the social media career, um, sort of one kind of goes with the other. And as his racing career became more and more successful, he, he was able to relax and kind of um, let out his personality a little bit more. And, you know, when he's home, uh, he'll just send me a video or a text or a picture and I think, what, what do you think of this? And I don't know how he comes up with it, but he, uh, <laughs> his mind's always going. And uh, it's a lot of fun to, uh, to, see, to, to obviously just tune in when, when I'm not expecting it and also to see kind of the process that he goes through. So Jordan, is it, uh, is it Rodney Sandstorm, a.k.a. Jordan Taylor, or is it Jordan Taylor, <laughs> a.k.a. Rodney Sandstorm? Which one is it? Yeah, I don't know. Different, they come out at different times for sure. And like the weird part about that is when I'm walking on the track, I'll now answer to Rodney or Jordan when people shout out my name. So. <laughs> it's very odd. So, so was this something that you specifically planned and thought out or you just thought, hey, why not? You know, let's, let's, let's have some fun. Uh, I mean, I'd say the whole social media thing, like, for me, started back when the mullet came around in uh, like 2013. That's kind of when I think I felt more comfortable, you know, showing my my side. And it actually started with Ryan Hunter Ray, because I said I'd grow a mullet, and he said, "There's no way you'd grow a mullet." And then uh, I kind of took that and ran with it, and then grew the mullet, and that kind of is what started, you know, people following me on social media a little bit more. And then the Rodney Sandstorm thing came out of nowhere when Jeff Gordon drove with us. He, uh, we were at lunch. Um, in Indianapolis, we were doing the simulator and we were just at a normal restaurant and he got stopped by like 10 people just in a restaurant for pictures on autographs. And I said to myself, like, if I just walk up to him dressed up as a fan, there's no way he'd recognize me because he's just dealing with it all day. And so I bought the jacket off eBay and grew a mustache and all sorts and he caught me within five seconds. So it, the prank didn't work at all, but uh, it evolved into what it is now. And you know, people enjoy it, so I don't. I enjoy it. You know, when I see other people enjoying it. All right, Jordan, you keep the ball. We're going to do some rapid fire questions here. It's an A and a B. It's a black and a white. It's a. It's an either or. Okay, so you just you just right. got to. Uh, you can have a couple of seconds to think about it, but for both of you, it's got to be quick answers. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Jordan, for you, non motorsport, non motorsport at school. Who was better at sport, you or Ricky? Ricky. What was the sport? Soccer, tennis, anything really. <laughs> Ricky, that's he a was nice very compliment. good at soccer. Actually. Soccer, okay. Ricky, for you, uh, who's the better cook? You, I know you don't live together now, but who's the better cook, you or Jordan? If you would have asked me before the quarantine, I would have said me. Um, <laughs> but Jordan being home all this time, and he's he's been sending us pictures of pastas and all these dishes that he's creating, and I don't know, it's, it's probably close now. Okay, so we'll call that we'll call that one level. Jordan, who did better at school academically? 
Uh, well, Ricky's graduated college, so he's ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> and is that is that on your plan? Is that is that on the to do list? I'm still in school. I'm in one class this semester, and I just signed up for two classes in the summer semester. Doing engineering, like Ricky? Oof, no, I'm in uh, uh, general studies, so it's okay. a bit of a. Okay, uh, Ricky, who was uh, who was either mum or dad's pet? You or your brother? Who do you who do you think uh, mum or dad might have favoured? <laughs> Jordan, Jordan. <laughs> if, it's, if it's dad, it's Jordan. If it's me, it's mom. Oh, okay. So that's nice. That's, that's, that's even. You know what? You know what I've always wondered? Uh, because we get to see and we've seen your dad for so, for so many years as a driver and as a very successful team owner. But sometimes we get to see your dad's temper, you know, whether he's smashing his uh, fist on the, on the uh, pit stand or whether he's throwing his, his headsets down. Um, who, uh, who, who, who kind of gave the tough love at home? Because your mum is so sweet. So was, was it behind closed doors that you got disciplined by mum or was dad? What, how did it work at home growing up? When we were, when we were actually, the, the one who raised us was our mum. <laughs> dad was always busy at the racetrack and he'd come in and lay down the iron fist every now and then. But mum was, although she's very sweet, she's got a tough side as well. Jordan, how did you see growing up? Yeah, I think uh, mom was definitely the disciplinary. I think, you know, we were with her most of the time because dad would be out traveling for races. But even when he would come back, I think he would want to, like, be the good parent and let us do whatever we wanted. So I think he would let us break the rules a little bit more now and then. But uh, he was very disciplined on making us shower and wash our hands and, you know, be clean. He's a bit of a neat freak. All right. Ricky, a movie at home or a movie at the movies? A uh, movie at home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, now a movie at the movies sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, sure. It sure does. But, uh, it sure does. We're, it's talk nice. we're talking non-pandemic here. We're talking just normal <laughs> circumstances. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Movie at home. Um, you know, I just like to sit on the couch and um, it's a good opportunity to eat something yummy and so it's a it's a whole experience. Jordan, a date with an interesting person or staying at home with Fonzie? Uh that's a tough one. Uh, I'll go with the interesting person. I'm with, I'm with Fonzie all day, every day. All right. All right. That, that's, that's an end to the rapid fire. So let's talk about an end to this coronavirus pandemic. We finally go back to racing. We now know that the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship schedule, like the NTT IndyCar schedule, has been um, massaged again. No more Detroit. Things are getting pushed back a little further, and, and understandably so. Once we get going, Ricky, what, what's on your to-do list? What, what's, what do you want to achieve in 2020? Yeah, this has been really tough. I mean, after having a really rough Daytona, um, finishing with, with hardly any points, uh, I was looking forward to getting as many, as many races to fight Clara our way back into the championship as possible. So we're going to have to go out and go to Watkins Glen. And uh, we've always had a very competitive car there. And so we've been, even though the simulator is 100% accurate at home, um, we've been going through our processes and trying to practice, you know, how we will be on the race weekends and we have to go win races. Um, and if we're going to get ourselves back into the championship with only, um, seven more to go as it is right now. So we really have to fight hard and win some races. Now, even though Cadillac won the Rolex 24 at Daytona, is it, is there going to be more Acura and Mazda wins this year? Yeah, I think, um, Daytona has been always historically a very good track for Cadillac. Um, although we, we showed good pace at times. Uh, when we go to Watkins Glen, uh, CTMP, uh, that string of races were, was very strong for the Mazdas last year. And I think over the course of the season, uh, as the six cars showed last year, um, our cars have really, uh, over the past two seasons, have developed a lot um, to be good over the average of the season. So I would expect Acura to be, to be there, thereabouts, every round this year. Um, but us on the seven car, we're just trying to win as many as we can. Yeah, last year for sure was a turning point. Uh, not only for you guys, but more so for, for the Mazda team. So we'll see what this year, once we get fired up, holds. Jordan, for you, going to the Corvette family um, it was nothing new, kind of, because you'd been there before. Um, but what's this new C8 like? The, the, the mid-engine car sounds totally different. I have to say, it, it took... I'm not sure if I'm still... if I'm used to it yet or not i was looking and listening and watching so intently at daytona but i i, I don't think i'm quite there yet it, it, it's taking a lot of getting used to what's it like inside 
inside the car, it's great. I think it is an adjustment. You know, I, I was able to drive the C6, C6R, the C7R, and now the C8R. So those were both front engine cars. Now we went to the mid engine, uh, which had a lot of hype around it. You know, everyone knew it was kind of coming at some point, but from a driver point of view, it's for me, it's been a huge upgrade. The drivability of it is way nicer. It's way more predictable. So for sports car racing and endurance racing, I think it suits it very well. Um, so for me, like Daytona was amazing that we came out there in our car, the three car, we had no issues all race long and finished fourth and showed pace that we could run for the, for a podium spot, you know, right out of the box. So I think it says a lot about Corvette and Chevrolet and all the work they've done with Brad Miller to, to build this car and prepare for the season. So we were just like Ricky, where we were excited for Sebring. We did two days of testing there. We were doing simulator work. And uh, unfortunately, that, that got moved off. But I think, you know, this, this gives us a lot of time. It could actually suit us a little bit better than everyone else, where we had a lot of projects that we wanted to work on. And this gives us a little bit more time to work before we go racing again. With this extended period at home because of the um, coronavirus pandemic, what's the one thing you've been doing at home every day? I've been cooking. <laughs> That's a big one. I think uh, I've, cooking, training. <laughs> yeah, I've. Uh, I think workouts have gotten more intense just because you got nothing else to do, and then eating a lot more because you're working out more. So, hopefully, I'm not gaining too much weight. Ricky, have you been uh, binge watching anything? Any series? Yeah, we've watched a couple of shows. We haven't probably watched any more TV than we would um, normally. Uh, definitely more time on the simulator. Um, just. Uh, trying to keep that little that little bit of feeling and whatever you can because being out of the car for this long, I don't know if everybody's been in the same boat like this before where everybody's not driving and nobody's driving at all. So um, you want to keep it as sharp as you can and whatever little cues that the simulator can give you, um, hopefully that'll, that'll make you a little more ready for when we go back racing. Well, good to see you both. Uh, good to hear from you and good to hear that the Taylor family is healthy and well. Stay that way and look forward to seeing you back at the track uh, real soon. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Lee. Hey, motorsports fans. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.